This is the video introduction to activity and activity coefficients. This is material from chapter 7 of your analytical chemistry textbook. We talked in the previous lecture about equilibrium constants, and we talked about a couple of cases in which they couldn't be constant. So we said that they change with temperature, and we looked at the thermodynamic definition of equilibrium constants. We also talked a little bit about, in terms of uh, solubility, how the solubility product constant, or KSP, can change based on other stuff that's in the solution, even if it's not, uh, well, we looked at the case where it was involved in the equilibrium. Uh, for example, adding excess chloride to a solution of mercuric chloride and, and seeing how the solubility changed. Turns out that this can happen, uh, this solubility change can happen even if you add an ion that is not involved in the equilibrium. So to that same equilibrium, adding, say, potassium fluoride. So we can consider an equilibrium of barium sulfate dissolving into ions in its solution, and this is represented by some KSP. If we do the math at equilibrium, each of these ions is going to have about 3 times 10 to the minus 5 molar concentration. So we can ask the question, what happens if we add barium chloride? Well, this is the example we saw last time. All right, the solubility is going to go down because there's going to be too much barium in solution. But we can ask, what if we add 0.03 molar potassium nitrate. Now, this is going to dissolve into its ions, the strong electrolyte, but it's not entirely clear how it's going to affect our ice table that we would make for this equilibrium. And if we do this, which we will in lecture, we see that the solubility increases by almost two times. So this is the opposite of the common ion effect. This is not decreasing the solubility now, it's actually increasing it. And the reason has to do with the effect of the total amount of ionic charge that's in the solution. So not participating in the equilibrium, but interacting with the ions. And you measure this total amount of charge in solution with this thing called the ionic strength, which depends on the concentration of each of the ions in solution and their charge. So more highly charged ions count more towards the ionic strength at a given concentration. This is for all the ions in the solution, even those that don't participate in the equilibrium that you care about. So if you, uh, if you go to calculate ionic strength, you have to take into account everything. The ionic strength uh, can be used to calculate another quantity called the activity coefficient, which is a number that sort of accounts for this deviation from ideal behavior caused by extra ions in solution. The activity coefficient is the gamma in this equation, and it multiplies the concentration to give this quantity called activity. And the activity is, the, is used to define the real equilibrium constant, K. So the definition we had in lecture previously was that the equilibrium constant is the concentrations of products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. The real equation is the activities of each raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. And so in the equation here, we have the products, uh, product concentrations times their activity coefficients divided by the reactant concentrations times their activity coefficients. And all of these should be raised to their stoichiometric coefficients if there are any. The reason that we usually assume that this is just fine to write in terms of concentrations is because at low ionic strength, it is. The activity coefficients go towards 1. But as the concentrations start to get higher, the uh, effect of ionic strength may become important enough that we have to now consider the activity coefficients. You can calculate these activity coefficients for ions using this equation called the debye huckel equation. And there are a few forms of it. This is the most complex one. Um, but they all have these, these three variables involved in them. Uh, we have mu, the ionic strength. We have alpha, the theoretical diameter of the ion that we care about, and z is its charge. And this equation gives us the negative log of gamma. This is the extended debye huckel concentration. Uh, it's used for higher, um, higher ionic strengths. At lower ionic strengths, you can simplify this solution a little bit. So we get a modified definition of pH from this activity coefficient, just like we got a modified definition of the, the uh, equilibrium constant. So we can have this question, you know, compare the pH of a solution containing 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide and a salt that doesn't, doesn't give H plus or OH minus ions. So if we calculate this without wondering about activity coefficients, this is a very easy problem. We 
find the, the hydroxide ion concentration, take the negative log to find the pOH, and then uh, that's it. And subtract 14 minus pOH gives the pH. If we do have to care about the activity coefficients, though, now we need a different definition of pH, which is the real definition, which is that it's the negative log of the activity of the hydrogen ion concentration. And so this is related to the OH concentration by the equation you see in the middle there, uh, and it's also related to the activity coefficient of OH minus, which depends on the ionic strength. So now the concentration of the calcium ions and the nitrate ions actually does come into play. In either case, whether we're talking about the new definition of pH or the new definition of the equilibrium constant, we need to remember that activity coefficients are used to modify the concentrations. They're not used to replace it. It's always activity coefficient times concentration instead of just concentration.